that case, work yourself into an early grave. But of course, uh, you don't have to go back to the store tonight. I've got to get the account straight, Laura, before we send out the orders. And the night time is the only time that I can do it. You could have done it this afternoon. But instead, talking to everybody. I was just being polite to the customers. Mm -hmm. Just good gossip, you mean. You know, uh, sometimes you remind me of your mother. Well, good for me. No, good for me. Good night, darling. something to eat. I'm hungry. get yourselves an Indian, cut a scalp right off and hang it on your saddle for the girls back home to see. <laughs> but don't faint in the meantime. <laughs> hey, look, he's got a great big gun, too. My, my, hey, ain't you afraid of that thing? <clears throat> Young fellow like you, walking around with a big old gun. Here, now. You got a bad tongue, mister. Maybe you ought to have it taken out, huh? Oh, a bad tongue of sword. Now watch it, boy. Now wait a minute. I was only funning you. I was only funning you. Oh, you shouldn't say things you don't mean, Mr. Big Mouth. Jim, take him! That's about enough. Did you see what he was doing, Ringo? Did you see it? I saw it, Natalie. Money you had it coming. <laughs> I was just funning with him. Maybe you like your face sliced up a bit, huh, Mr. Give me that knife. I'm warning you. I ain't just playing with it this time. Miles. Now you leave off that. Here, you put that knife away. Man of the law, too. Shame on you. I'm Aben Burke, sir, and I ask your pardon for my boy. No pardon necessary. I'm John Ringo. Well, I'm glad to know you. There's a nickel thriller book all about you back home. Read it myself. Says you're the fastest. I've seen it. You know, these boys shouldn't be in here, Mr. Burke. They're too young. Oh, they're good boys. They wouldn't drink or nothing like that. Uh, now, here, shake hands with the famous Mr. Rango boy. Tell him you're sorry. Now, go on. Sorry. Other gentlemen, too. I don't like no wet behind the ears kid taking a knife to me. That boy's apologizing, Fitzpatrick. See, Sheriff, he's a good boy. I just left him here while I uh, went up the street to have the horses put up. Didn't mean for him to drink no hard liquor or nothing. You didn't drink anything, did you? Oh, I see, Sheriff. Now, come on, come over here and sit down. Join me. Oh, uh, Miles, you take Jeb out and uh, look over the town. Come on, sit down, Sheriff. Join me. Now, you mind telling me what you and those boys were doing here in Bilotti? Well, uh, we're looking for a stray. What's your name? My name's Jamie. My name's Laura. Thomas. Is, uh, Jamie all the name you have? <coughs> Jamie Frederick. I bet you run away from home. Home? Oh, I ain't had a home since I was a kid. Oh, well, your mother and father. Father's dead. 
Your mother? I ain't seen my ma since I can remember. And what are you running away from? Burke. I treat that boy like he was my own son, Mr. Ringo, just like he was my own flesh and blood. But he's not your real son. Well, no, he was bound to me. You see, back home, when a boy's ma or pa falls sick or dies and he ain't proper cared for, well, the law sends him to live with somebody else who can do for him. You're almighty anxious to catch a boy who's not your own and who doesn't even want to stay with you in the first place. He must have come about 300 miles. 400 miles. You see, I got other boys bound to me. One of them runs away, it sets a bad example. See, Sheriff, Jamie and them others belong to me just like they're my very own. It's the law. If he's anywhere around, I want to know about it. He's my charge. Uh, we'll talk about it back in my office, Mr. Burke. Never raised a hand to those boys. Never raised a hand. See that? That's Whippets. Miles. That's Pa Burke's real son. He was always giving somebody a whippet. Guess I was a favorite. I used to get him two, three times a week. Pa Burke did that? Why? To work us more. While Miles beat us, the old man watched. You stay where you are. Ah, oh, Jamie, come on. I want to help you. I don't want no help. I ain't trusting you or nobody else till I get some deep rivers and high mountains between me and them Burks. Well, at least let me put something on your back. It'll feel a little better. No, thank you just the same. I'm used to it. I guess you can't go back there, can you? I don't figure to. Just got to keep the Burks from finding me. Sure don't seem like there's any sign of them. Yeah, we'll just knock on a few doors. Well, it's kind of late for that, ain't it? You don't care much about finding them, do you? Maybe you'd even like to be with them, huh? <laughs> That's all right, Jeb. I know you ain't gonna run. Not while I can run faster. Then I'll fight you when you're caught. You get those two gentlemen put to bed? Yeah, they're in the back sleeping like babies. Just don't let them match. Now, this is Mr. Burke, Cully. He thinks he's lost a boy somewhere in Velarde. A runaway. Oh. 40 mile, huh? What? Forty miles. That's that's a boy who runs away from home. He usually doesn't get further than forty miles. Now, this one got four hundred miles. We'll get him. Pleased to meet you. I guess where do you think he was going, Mr. Burke? Well, he had some idea. His mom went to Arizona. He's looking for her. Oh, I wasn't he sure. I thought his mother lived near your farm. Oh, she did. But eight miles is a long walk both ways. Law says I don't have to give a boy a horse till he's 21 and on his own. A horse, a saddle, a suit of clothes. Seems to me his mother would have wanted to come and see him. Oh, she did a few times, but he was always out working someplace. Besides, it, well, it upsets the boys when uh, the folks come to visit him. Throws them off their feed sometimes two or three days. Slows up their work, too. Yeah, I can imagine. And my boys work hard, but they live right. I don't work nobody on Sunday, and I give them church and prayers in the afternoon. They're pretty happy working for you, is that right? I never ask them. I keep them warm dressed, full bellies, and work them hard. If they got any complaints, I don't hear them. Now, this paper says that Jimmy Frederick belongs to me legal. You gonna help me find him? The law's on your side, Mr. Burke. That boy's in Velarde, we'll find him. Are we gonna sit here all night? Just until everybody in the town's asleep. I doesn't go out yet. Jamie, let me help you. You've been nice, Miss Thomas. Maybe I can trust you. You can, you can trust me. I want to help you. Then again, maybe I can't. Oh, I come too far now to take chances. You could stay here tonight. I've got a friend that could help you. I can go to him. I don't want anybody to know about me. That's no way to help. Jamie, they're gonna find you sooner or later. You can't do it alone. The more people that know about me, the less chance I have. I go to Johnny Ringo. You'll be safe in Velarde. He's the sheriff. Oh, I've got to answer the door. They can see the light, you know.
good evening, ma'am. Sorry to bother you. What is it? Well, uh, we're looking for a dirty old boy, about 15. He ran away from home. We come to take him back. That's, uh, well, that's too bad. Well, I wish I could help you. But, uh, if you excuse me, I'm going to bed now. If, uh, you see him, you send word to Mr. Burke at the hotel, all right? All right. I'll do that. Good night. I could have told him, Jamie. Now, do you trust me? She was going to bed, huh? Kelly, go to the hotel and find Avon Burke. Tell him we found his runaway. Johnny, you can't do that. He trusted me. Laura, I can't help it. The boy's bound to Burke by law. But if you could just see the boy... That wouldn't make any difference. I don't write the laws, I just try to enforce them. This law you're talking about was written to help and protect boys like Jamie. To give them a home and security, not to turn them into slave labor. Listen to me. John Ringle, the spirit of law is just as important as the old letter. Go ahead, Cully. Go ahead, Cully. Laura, I don't know how Burke treats his boys, but I do know for sure what the law says. And I gotta go with it. Well, Jamie was right. first. Sheriff, see who found him? She's in his office. Where is he? Sheriff will tell you. Where's the boy? Well, I'll have to go pick him up. Well, let's get started. He'll have to go with us, Laura. Well, the door is open. Anybody can go in. We can't go in unless you're there. That's the law. You got him, Pa. Walked right in our hands. Good boy. Take him on down to the hotel. He's hurt. You go call Dr. Bardell. No call for no doctor, lady. Just a couple bumps on the head. Doc Bardell's way out of Toomey's ranch. We'd like to get started right away, Sheriff. Save me the price of a hotel room if we could leave tonight. Cully, go find Case. Yeah, let's get him inside.
get away from me. Jamie. Trust me, you said. Trust me. Well, I did. Because I'm a dumb country oh, boy. Oh, Jamie. I didn't do this to you. Believe me, I didn't. No. They were just accidentally waiting for me. I really don't know how they found you. I thought you were different. But you're not. Nobody is. You're all alike. Let's have a look at you, boy. The rest of you, get out of here. Case, I can help, really, if, if you need me. If I want you, I'll call you. Johnny, don't you dare let them take that boy away tonight. Oh, please. Tonight or tomorrow, what's the difference? He's got to go back with him. Don't you know what they're going to do to that boy? Lady, save your sympathy for somebody who needs it. All right. All right! Mr. Burke, why don't you tell the sheriff exactly what you're going to do with Jamie once you get him? Oh, he'll get a licking, but he deserves it making us chase him all this way. A licking? A licking? You'll beat him until he's scarred for life. Johnny, you don't know Brick and his son. They've got these boys in a... in absolute slavery. <laughs> Is that what that boy told you? Listen, I saw the marks of the whipping. Now, I've got a right to punish the boy. Shut up, Burke. Wait a minute. You don't scare me none. And that star don't change your killer complexion. That boy's mine by right. If you're any kind of a law man, he'll come back with me. I don't like the smell of you, Burke. You take the law and twist it for your own profit. I never broke no law. How's he, Case? He's all right. All he wants is a few good meals, and, and somebody's been after him with a whip. But he's strong and healthy. He'll survive him. How about his head? Oh, just a nasty crack on the head. But he'll be all right in a day or two. But in the meantime, no need to send the dog to Bardell. But no traveling, no riding. Now, we got to be leaving. You heard the man, Burke. You take a boy over to the hotel and put him in bed. All right, let's be out. Thanks, Case. That's all right, good night. We'll be back here in the morning. And Burke. As long as you're in Polarity, don't you lay a hand on that boy. What a geek that prick is. We used to get his kind around the carny. Always causing trouble. Isn't there anything you can do about him, Johnny? I'm wired back east. Maybe we can find a loophole in his papers. Can't go no farther without a rest. Miles like to kill him back there. There's a cleared place on up ahead. We'll stop there and fix us something to eat. But by the sheriff will be chasing us. We got the law on our side, like he says. If that ain't enough, we can always use this. Now come on, let's have no sass back.
hotel clerks when they left at sunrise. This time they broke my law. Mr. Ringo, I'll split you wide open like a ripe squash. I'm holding a nervous gun. You got him. You got him, Pa. Get on, Miles. You can't watch both of us. My pa. Untie Jamie. I'm gonna see you dead, Ringo. Oh? Well, you can have that chance right now. Go on, try it. You can't do it, can you, Miles? You're only a man because your pa said you were. It was his strength that really mattered, not yours. Your nerve is as dead as he is. Sorry, Miles. I've been trying to think of some way to thank you. Nothing seems like enough. Think of us sometimes, would you? Think of you. I'll never forget all you did for me. Write us when you find your mother, huh, Jamie? I will. And when we get settled, you come and visit us, all right? All right. Whenever you want. Good luck, Jamie. Goodbye, Jack. Bye. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye. Do you think we, we will ever hear from him again? Maybe, maybe not. You know, Burke was a mean old cuss, but he was right about one thing after all. Like what? They're good boys. Real good boys. Ringo, Johnny Ringo, his fears were never shown. The fastest gun in all the West, the quickest ever known. Travel, trouble was all that he found. Face to face with a man said to prove that he could shoot Ringo down. Ringo, Johnny Ringo, his fears were never shown. The fastest gun in all the West, the quickest ever known.
any case, work yourself into an early grave. But of course, sir, you don't have to go back to the store tonight. I've got to get the account straight, Laura, before we send out the orders. And the night time is the only time that I can do it. You could have done it this afternoon. But instead, talking to everybody. I was just being polite to the customers. Mm -hmm. Just good gossip, you mean. You know, uh, sometimes you remind me of your mother. Well, good for me. No, good for me. Good night, darling. something to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> you, uh, you farmer boys come out to get yourselves an Indian, cut a scalp right off and hang it on your saddle for the girls back home to see. <laughs> but don't faint in the meantime. <laughs> hey, look, he's got a great big gun, too. My, my, ain't you afraid of that thing? Young fellow like you, 